Well, good to have you join us once more as we look at a fresh episode on Africa Discourse. And we are looking at what where we left off last week on the presidential election that was conducted March 24 in Senegal and all that transpired. Now, Senegal's Constitutional Council on Friday confirmed the presidential election victory of the opposition uh, candidate, Basiro Diomayefai. And this is paving way for his inauguration as the country's fifth president. And that will be uh, culminating as the outgoing president, Mackinson, will be featured. The top court validated provisional results announced on Wednesday based on votalis from 100% of polling stations. Fire won more than 54% of votes in last Sunday's delayed presidential poll, with ruling coalition candidate Amado Ba taking over 35%. Now, he's expected to be sworn in to replace the outgoing President Makisov April 2, that is tomorrow. And when Basiro Demoyefaye is sworn in tomorrow, uh, hopefully after winning Senegal's election on a wave of change, the challenges he faces seem to be as tough as the expectations are high. And Faye has set out his priorities in his first public statement after his election victory, and that is to lower the cost of living, fight corruption, and ensure national reconciliation. On this platform, we're going to be discussing, uh, looking at what we have here in this direction as regards the Senegal's uh, coming swearing in of the fifth president, which features tomorrow. And discussing this vital topic with me, starting from my immediate left, I have uh, a lecturer at the University of Benin and uh, HOD Chemistry Department, and of course, the past uh, chairman of. ASU Uniben chapter, Professor Julius Iyasele. Thanks for coming, Julius. Yeah, you would have noticed that uh, my hat is not here. <laughs> I've doffed my cap because <laughs> of Fai. Yeah, yes, that's awesome. Because it can't, it can't, can't, it can't beat it. Oh, you awesome. understand? Wonderful young man. That's a beautiful salute. Ah, to what, <laughs> so, uh, good afternoon, uh, 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 listeners and viewers. And uh, good afternoon, Thank My you. brother. Thank you. Yeah. And next to Professor Julius E. Yassele is a legal practitioner, Emmanuel Obakolo. Good to have you join me, Emmanuel. It's a pretty good day. Good afternoon, Nigerians. Good afternoon, Africans. And next to him is a political scientist, Erudite Adat, and he is also a lecturer at the University of Benin of the Political Science Department. And he is Neville Obakolo. Welcome. A peace start to our fellow Christians that are viewers to this program. Have a good day with us in this program today. All right. It's a beautiful, bright weather, and uh, fairly we're looking at the bright side in Africa, positioning it in Senegal, where they had election on Sunday, March 24, and all that transpired, you know, we had it last week, and a lot was said as regards the expectations, and Faye uh, happens to pull up, um, pop up as the uh, emerging candidate that won the election. And now he's the president-elect, and he's expected to be sworn in tomorrow, and uh, a speedy one at that. So we're looking at the priorities that he has set before himself, yeah. the aspect of uh, reducing cost of living, and of course, uh, looking at the aspect of fighting corruption, and uh, that of national reconciliation. Some have said that just as the expectations are high, so are the challenges that he, face, uh, he faces are also high. So what do you expect? Do you, need, do you see a quick fix-it from... Uh, the president-elect as he's sworn in to hit the ground running by tomorrow. Though I'm not a prophet, <laughs> but what I see is that uh, Basiru Jumai Fai, you know, commands respect, good followership, a man from prison to president. Exactly. What, what, can, what, what credentials mm. can you uh, parade again? And of course, you know, it's coming from an opposition camp. His main man who controls power there is also mm. behind him. Osman Songo. That Os yeah. <laughs> Osman Songo. And so... Who was one way or the other well, disqualified? Well, uh, he, he, he was, was, he was, was the banned. He was banned. Yeah, he was banned just because of protests mm. and all that. And mm. then he has said that fire is me. Mm. I'm fire. Yeah, of course. So if you, if, if you stop me, you can't stop our dream. And that is what is. I think that's where Diomaye comes, comes in. in. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I mean now. They stopped him, but they couldn't stop yeah. Diomaye. Mm. And now he's already there. Young man of 44 years. 
You had his first broadcast after winning that election, where he told the new clan and his to, to hands off mm. that he is there. Mm. You know, the truth about it is that he, he did some kind of analysis and showed how the double standard that the French government have implemented and used Africans to play mm. and all of that. And so he's there when you have good followership, you are commanding your people and all that. Why won't you be able to, to reduce cost of living? And he's saying, talking about also employment in, in, uh, in Senegal. They have the way we talk to be able to make it. It's policies that is the problem. That is um, okay. now that he has he put good policies okay. on ground. I think, I think that's a beautiful start. But yes. I, I think we should not uh, forget so quickly that Senegal is an African country. And uh, we have these issues bedeviling Africa countries. What makes you think that that issues of uh, that has been affecting or that has been contagious or infectious on African countries not being able to, you know, come out clean in order to meet up demands in terms of meeting up with their priorities that they've set? You know, in Nigeria, for instance, we've had all of these from one administration to the other. There are promises and uh, the perspective seems to be bright, but by the time they hit the ground running, it's a different ballgame mentality. So what makes you think there's not going to be uh, a same song in Senegal, Emmanuel? Um, firstly, I salute the courage of uh, the, Amar the Amara Faye. Pasiro Jumaye Faye. Yes. Yeah. I, if you look at his inaugural speech, you would want to agree absolutely with me that that young man is going to do well. Because firstly, he has vowed to remove the hand of the monkey from in the soup. And uh, when you look at Africa, the colonial lords are still present in Africa. And they've ensured that they tied every one of us to their apron and they do the control. We saw that in Nigeria before the general election last year where the presidential candidates of the major political parties, so to speak, were all at a, uh, what they call it, what house? In a, uh, Chatham uh, House. Cat Chatham House. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yes, where they go to begin to tell the old world their legacies, their policies, their principles. And from that, you know that we are, they are bound to fail. I'm sorry, with all due respect to them. But here is a young man. Firstly, he has dealt with a the, young man with two wives. Don't the, forget. No, oh, yes. the, the that of, people see that it could be also a distraction. The mm -hmm. number of wives is not an the number of wives is not an issue. Your president is over for you have the, the, the Jamaican question is does he have his head on his neck? That is the Jamaican question. And to my mind, I think the young man has his head on his neck because first of all he has sent a signal to the colonial laws, the French, that look, it is no longer business at, as usual. Mm. And moreover, you know that Senegal just now is barricaded with lack of jobs. You have um, migration. You, you have, um, and one good thing that has happened to her is the oil boom in this 2024. So if, if he can handle the job issue, and that job issue will also, uh, to a great extent, uh, reduce or ameliorate the migration. Experts have said that it is a difficult task for uh, the Senegal president or fifth president-elect uh, mm. to really tackle that aspect of uh, job opportunities. That because he made it clear that it's going to create jobs. But how do you do that? Isn't it worthy enough to look at how you can make or uh, profile policies, you know, that will rejig the environment and make it, you know, employment opportunity friendly? Uh, are, rather than rather than creating jobs directly, how is he going to do that? You are Don't think that's an equilibrium task. You have whether it is an equilibrium task or not. Every uh, the, uh, the challenges of today are very equilibrium because most of them seem to be scientific and technological. But however, when you are a, a leader that has the people at the back of your mind, you know that these persons you are going to do your best possible to see that you ensure that all is well with the people. Look at looking at it from this angle. You, when, you, when you bring policies, and your policies are people-friendly, your policies ensure that, one, there is security. Investor-friendly, too? Yes, the investors will come. No, like what we have here, where you hear our leaders will be telling us that they are going to look for investors. What are you looking for investors? The story is not far-fetched. So it's not quite in, different from that in, of in, Nigeria. No. The story is not quite different from that of Nigeria. Listen. Now, we have, we have an employment rate of 20% mm. that has been officially recorded, mm. you know. 
and a situation where over 75 percent of the 18 million population are less than 25 years of age. Mm -hmm. Now, there seems to be an equivalent task for uh, the president elect and uh, when he's sworn in. The big question here is how does he reposition the economy, an economy that is service driven? Uh, what are the uh, modalities he will be putting in place? And most especially when you know that it, it's not going to come by easy, it's not just a, a quick fix it. It's going to go through, you know, structures revamp. It's going to go through policy formulations. And all that will take time. But how much of time will the Senegalese wait to see that come up? I think they just have to be patient with this uh, uh, forthcoming administration. One, his, his policies will tell from the outset whether or not he's going to achieve all that he has promised the people of Senegal. Okay. And I think I see Senegal going forward just now. Okay. You are a political scientist, uh, Devil Obakedo. Looking at what has been happening in Africa, some say that uh, the infectious uh, theory can tell easily that Africa seems to be suffering from a major problem, an aspect of corruption. Now, corruption creeps into the family. Uh, no matter how, whether it's a polygamy or a monogamy, corruption creeps into the family. And how can that be tackled? Do you see the possibility of uh, the president-elect when sworn in into office to do a magical change? In that regard, as we <clears throat> as we periscope uh, over Senegal and the recent political transition, what comes to my mind is the leadership that be provided by the leaders of Senegal from independence date. What is happening right now in Senegal as there's about to be a change of button from Maki saw to Basiru Jumai. Jumai Fai. Mm. It reminds me of the of the grip of the political power of Senegal, starting from the government of Leopold Sedasego. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of his successor, Abdul Diouf. It reminds me of his successor of Abdul Diouf, Abdullah Ward. Were they of good records? I'm coming to that. <laughs> then we now have Makiso. Mm. The first thing, we need to understand the political culture of Senegal from independence, the date. The political culture, starting from the government of Leopold Sedasego, is what we refer to in political analysis as the subject political culture. A political culture that is dictated by the party in power and determine the participation of the people. That determines the level of socialization that the people will experience. And so when, Senec when uh, Leopold said that Senegal was there, he was like, he was running a war party state. All of that position were guillotined out of existence. This was what Abdul Diouf inherited because they are the same party, up to this period of Makisa. The question then is whether the person that is there now that is coming now can make a radical yes, change. Can make a radical change. <laughs> the answer is no. Because uh, uh, the answer is no. Yeah, the answer is no because the policies are well entrenched. And they have been incremental from 1960 to date. The Basilo Fire is not a military dictator. He hmm. cannot cancel the policies that are in existence. Hmm. As a matter of fact, one of the reasons one of the reasons why he, he ended up becoming, ended up becoming president-elect is because of the judiciary. And you cannot change the policies of a country without a legal framework. Because every policy of government has the toga of a legal framework. Mm -hmm. Without that, and the interpretation of that legal framework falls back to the judiciary. So, we know just now that uh, it was uh, Osmane Sonko, Sonko that the people of Senegal were yearning for to become their president. But because of the manipulative subject political culture of the country, state apparatus were used to get that man out of the way. Even the elected president mm. was also put in prison. The judiciary rescued him and made his name to appear on the ballot after the, the party who appointed him as the general to become the presidential candidate. Mm. The point we are trying to make is that there is no radical change that can happen under the government of B.D. Faye 
unless he works with the National Assembly. Okay. Because the National Assembly will play the role. And he does not have majority of his uh, party members yes. in the National Assembly. That is, that is That's where, another setback. That is where he is going to now, he is not going to now play the politics. The or dissolve of, the National Assembly? No. It, it, it does he have the power to dissolve the National Assembly? It, 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 he has the power after two years. If he dissolves the National Assembly, it would the matter not get back to the Constitutional Court that made him to be a candidate in that election for the matter to be resolved. If you look at the e the drinks and the policies that, that the elite of Senegal played before this election, when I say elite, I'm referring to the likes of Abdul Diouf, Abdullah Awad, then the, the combat president. They did not want the opposition. They did not want uh, Osman Isoko. And they did not want uh, Faye to be president. They, did, they wanted, what do you call that man? Osman okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, to become president. Every other person that they saw as a threat, they systematically disqualified them for the process. Now, back to the issue of the prospects. It is true that Senegal, like every other country, is having all these problems of corruption, a weak institution that need to be strong and need to be empowered. It is true that the people of Senegal, maybe because of stability, political stability in their country over the years, no military government, they, they, have, been, they have been happy with their government. But in a way, over half, let me just say about 15 million of the population live below poverty line. From the 18 million? Yes. Okay, you just a rough estimate. Yes, yes, from the 18 million, mm. ab about 15 million of the Senegali population lives below yes, poverty, yes, line. poverty line. So That's abject poverty. There is a great task, there's an equal task ahead of FAI. But uh, the, there's a popular, popular slogan in our Pidgin English language that says, Uno go no no. Okay, the I, I man is about to be president now. All right. He will not. Know, he will not understand. Okay. The challenges of the office of the president. Let me let me pause you there. Yeah, let me pause you there. You said a whole lot, yes. and I, I believe that is is enough to you know unsettle uh, Professor Julius here. Isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because because uh, starting is, our is, this conversation, is, this he gave us a bright side. Yeah. Because you know, I, even, even Emmanuel gave us some brighter side, but yeah. you hey, just turned it down. Hey, yeah. nobody yeah. is disagreeing yeah. with yeah. 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 He's a political scientist. He has seen the trend. He has seen the trend. From 1963. And so, you know, political scientists are most times also historians. <laughs> and so he has well, he doesn't know that history, you know, one day on the one platform can change. Mm. And these same young men are in opposition. Thank God he mentioned that those that subsisted in Senegal didn't want him. And he knows. And none of them before this time were able to bear the new colonials. That is France. And this man even before being sworn in, has raised the red flag against them. Don't forget, the, he, has, he has an issue with the National Assembly. Yes, uh, the issue. If the see, party does, if the party see, passed them, does not you have a majority at all. You, you, see, that, see, you see, you see. Don't see that as a clause in the way of progress? No. That will also you be surprised, you'll efforts. be surprised that many of those in the National Assembly would follow him. Oh. We turn. That's 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 because, that is hopeful. Because the followers, hopeful. He, the followership of their party is enormous in Senegal. They com they command, you know, popularity. And so, what else? Are you forgetting Another, the African factor? Which African factor? These guys themselves are Afro centrism. These are these people. They are Pan Africanists. And look at where they come from. The region. The support. Senegal is going to get this time from the trial before now. Mali and Co. Ivory Coast, even and all that. Chad, Niger, around us here. You will see, we monumental. In uh, Basil is not is from the left. So ideologically, he stands very very strong from the left. But let's yeah, look yeah. at let's look at the political weight. That is right. No, the weight let's is look, already there. Let's, let's, buy what let's, let's, let's look at the policies that have been on ground, like what Neville Opagato said. If, 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 His ability to uh, kind of
change the, 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 the board game entirely without that is, the assistance of the Constitutional Council? That's what I'm telling you now that it has started. He didn't need Constitutional Council to stop France, to warn France, to remove their hands from Senegal. So what do you, that gives you, that's a pointer to the man that, the pungent man that is coming. That guy, did you listen to his English? But, 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 but you that agree, guy, but, you that agree is but you agree, but you agree that Africa countries uh, seem to be bedeviled with weak institutions of governance. See, that have been the headache you, and uh, you, you can, that has been a pain in the ass of make, the African You can government. make them strong. How do you want that to change? You can, so you know, and if you remember somebody like Magufuli, what he did in Tanzania, mm. you remember. Mm. It's, not, it's just that uh, this same imperialist came I know, and then killed him. Do you understand? These people don't want any. I, I, in fact, when I listen to the speech of Wigwe uh, about the university he was putting in place, I said, These people will kill him. Hmm. I said that before but I heard people seem not to last. Ah, not good people don't seem to last. If you don't watch your back, hmm. if you don't put certain, so many things in place, even it was stated that the rich Americans don't fly, you know, a helicopter, places like that. But I listened to his speech about the university he was putting in place and what he wanted to do with the university. The young men from there have talked about the problems of imperialists in Nigeria and all that. And he was training boys to repress them, to push these people back. But unfortunately, unfortunately, but... That is the same thing you are saying about Basiri now. Basiri knows his enemies from the beginning. And he's working his back? Yes. The only undoing will be if there become strife between him and Osman Sonko. Do you Which is that? unlikely. Very unlikely. But then, you know human beings. Mm. Power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts. Exactly what Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Exactly what Do you understand? So, the issue is that if they are able to work the instrument of power and then they remain, you know, and work in tandem, you will see that it, because they have the resources. There, there's an oil boom there. They have land. Look at the population, manageable population and all that can become agrarian. So when you talk about even creation of jobs or creating a enabling environment, first of all, with speeches that he has made, there are countries, there are people. Let me tell you, that very soon you are going to see countries like Russia, they will come, come closer also. They will get near China, they will come. Although you mentioned China in one place. But then come and invest, play your role. But don't meddle into, into power. Okay. Don't insist on what the rulership and the governance okay. should be okay. in Senegal. I'll, I'll, I'll come back to you. It's interesting looking at what you just said. And something you said really tickles my fancy. Uh, power corrupts. An absolute power corrupts absolutely. Take it from there because we are looking at the possibility of uh, the uh, Dumaifai to be able to manage the success he has at present, you know, as he hit the ground running in governance. Most especially as they say that if you fight corruption, corruption fights back. How is he going to handle it? Well, power can only corrupt and corrupts absolutely when the instrumentality of that power is abused. But in this situation, I do not see that because first, the man has the larger support of the people. He enjoys the goodwill, the support, the strength. That's not in doubt. People. That's not in doubt. But finding no. fruition no. in bringing what he has said, his priorities into play, is a challenge. The man has started already. Firstly, the man has sent a signal to the neo-colonial masters. He has sent a signal to them because the, the, the larger problem that Africa has is from the colonial lords who are now colonialists. That is the larger problem we have. Then, the, the, like, like uh, my co-panelist here, talk, uh, uh, Dr. Bakado, when you look at the former leaders, those who once upon a time mount the power, the, the stage of power in Senegal, they now formed a cabal to the extent that they now be the ones to dictate who becomes the president of Senegal. We, because we look at the challenges. We are, uh, you fight corruption, corruption seems to be fighting back. If we can have this headache still unable to be unplugged in Nigeria, 
who is a giant of Africa, what makes you think that it can happen in Senegal successfully without having hitches or issues? No, there's no way that there, there could not be resistance from uh, particularly those who are the uh, perpetrators of uh, such high degree of corruption. But one thing is this, leadership or governance is not magical and it's not utopian. What you just need is that first, the zest, which is the interest you have for your country, two, the courage, three, the determination. By the time you come these three together, you discover that you get the result. You achieve something better for yourself and for your people. And mind you, the likes of fire would want to write their name on the sand of time. So when you have that kind of, that kind of uh, 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 belief, you have that kind of uh, strength, you have that kind of uh, determination, now look, I, I, I think it's a privilege for me to be in power. It's a privilege to carry my country from this level we are now to a better and a higher level. Then you need to put up your best possible. And I think that is what I see this young man would do in Senegal. Mind you, all of the persons who have once upon a time ruled Senegal, there is no person who has who has fallen within his age bracket. So, and with his... Has with it anything to do with age? With, listen, with, if you go to, to history... You find out that those who have really done so much wonderfully well in terms of gov governance, you discover Globally. that the young minds Compare. are the ones. Because, <laughs> because by the Sakara. time your, your, mind, your, mind, your mind tells you where, where you are coming from and where you are going to, your mind tells you what you think the people of your country need. What about political, political experience? Mentioned. What about political experience? Political experience, the experience is already there. Fire has been in the political uh, 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 political uh, uh, realm for a very long time, to the extent that he was in prison. He was not in prison because he was not a, a, a politician. He was in prison because he was a politician. But however, his kind of politics is a philosophical politician that he is. So we need a politician that is philosophical. Okay. And I think to this extent, because I liken him to the likes of Kwame Nkrumah, mm -hmm. to uh, this young man, former Burkina Faso president that Prof just Sankara. mentioned, to Thomas Sankara. I liken him to, the, to this sort of person. And I see him doing well. Okay. And I think the remainder of Africa would learn from Senegal. Okay, as we swing the pendulum to uh, the extreme left, where we may be having some negative vibes in that direction. The man that is uh, let's, us. See, let's see if you'll be coming with something hopeful for um, Senegal's government looking at the hitting of the ground by the fifth president, uh, which happens to be uh, Duma Ifaye as he is inaugurated tomorrow. But let's look at this challenge where it's been said that the negative trends of the war in Ukraine is seriously affecting Senegal. And the cost of living, he said, will be reduced. I don't know if he has the magic wand. Do you also have the worry? Well, <clears throat> I've just made a summary of what I feel we may expect. A president-elect who will be president tomorrow, Basiro Diomaye Faye, would need to preside over the affairs of Senegal. And I said that he is not a military dictator. Would he have been able to pull through if he was? that assuming he were to be a military dictator, then somebody will say, okay, because he's aligning with another strong military person outside and another strong military power, he could just be calling the bluff by telling a previous or former colonial master to steer off their, their politics and their economy. It's not now, about the issue of colonial masters. They are no more under that. After all, uh, is a free state, a sovereign state. And so what makes you think that there's still appendages that could also affect or reduce the speed of hitting the ground on transforming I've not said there, the government there will be, in I've Senegal? I've not said there will be a reduction in the speed of hitting the ground running. And I don't want to believe that if you call two, three discussants to a program like this, all of them will do the same line. Mm. Uh, so I may mm -hmm. not do the same line with... Uh, my senior colleague, I'm a no, former no, no. chairman. It's, it's based on your scientific perspective. Yes, I mean, also do the same like with uh, uh, my my friend, my Christian brother, uh, Obakolo Esquire. Hmm. I always speak on the basis of my understanding of political developments. And your research? Yes. So, number one, I do not believe that President D.D. Faye of Senegal we like to behave 
like Captain Somo Takara of Burkina Faso. But he would like to write his name in the sound of time. That yes, go. yes. I know he would like to write his name. I don't believe mm -hmm. that he would like to, to behave that way. If he's going to behave that way, he should learn from the mistakes or the end of Captain Thomas Akara. Okay, but, 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 but you why, 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 why you still have the floor? Yes, yeah. I, I want you to also bridge it with what he said yeah. concerning could there be also a possibility of having some friction with the uh, one that gave him such political uh, strength to say that is his replacement? Talking okay. about Osman Soko. 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 Because was... it's always beautiful when yeah. uh, we cook the food together, but when the food has been cooked, uh, I'll come to, to, to the issue of, uh, of uh, Osmano Sonko. Let me just quickly say the other things I wanted to say about All right. the likes of Thomas Sankara. I don't believe that President B.D. Faye will behave like Patrice Lumumba of uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, formerly Zaire. Because if he's going to behave like that, he should go and study history and see how Patrice Lumumba ended. <laughs> I don't believe that he's going to behave like a former U.S. Secretary General who was killed by this powerful element in a plane crash. I'm trying to remember his name since. Uh, he was a Secretary, serving Secretary General who was aligning himself with certain opposition for changes in the United Nations and some of the development that were happening in the Middle East. He ended up dying in a plane crash with his crew members. Mm. I don't believe that he would like to behave like uh, President Magufuli of Tanzania, BT Memorial. Hope you don't. I hope you are not planning to scare the fifth president. <laughs> no, we are not planning to scare him. <laughs> but what you are just reading out, if he was here listening, it's, it's, it's enough to make I him sure. I don't also believe that. Well, I'm coming. I will explain the reason why I'm saying it. I don't also believe that I would like to behave like uh, a wartime president of uh, of uh, of Chile. Okay. President Salvador Allende. What happened? He was killed. That was what brought uh, Augustino Pinochet to power in China, mm. uh, pardon, in Chile. Okay. So there are several other leaders across the world mm. who wanted, without the backbone, who wanted, without doing their own work, without pitching their threat towards a power that could rescue them. Okay. They launched into the deep of trying to say, the, what you are people. saying, what you are saying, is conditional. Yes. But if he's able to do all of this yes. and uh, with all other factors uh, equal, yes, he can put through. Yes, if he's able to do that, okay, then we will not leave the rest for his history. Tent. Yes, as we will not leave the rest for with the for powers history. that be. Yes, we will not leave the rest for you. Are you talking? Are you talking about external forces? Yes, I'm talking about external forces. For now, he has he has temporarily subdued the internal internal forces, the forces of uh, of Makiso, Forces of uh, Abdullah Ward, forces of Abdul Diouf, and the, denal, uh, the political dynasty of uh, Leopold Sedasego. He has already subdued those one by becoming president because of the, of the mammoth support. The mammoth support that the Senegalese had for Osmane Soko, they transferred to him. Now, the question is whether he will be able to not dance to the whims and caprices of the person. Or manage the friendship. Yeah, yeah with the relationship. Or, or, yeah, with. with uh, uh, Sonko, Osman. He made a statement, and the statement is national reconciliation. That reconciliation cannot be complete without, without granting a prerogative of mercy to Osmani Sonko. Osoko. First so, thing. So that's speedily coming? Uh, yes. That is number one. Number two, he should, because the the program for taking over the government from Makiso was drawn by Osman Osoko with himself and their party supporters. Integrated. Yes. I don't believe now that he will be performing any function. He will be carrying out any <laughs> radical change without going back to go and consult the political structure that brought him to But Osman Soko is not a president. He is the president. Yeah. And there is exactly what we said. When I'll you come say, back to you. When you say, when you say you. a man is That's, president, yeah, yeah, let yes, me just, yes, let yeah, me yes. just say this one. When you say a man is president, several persons are president. Only one person is president. I'll give you an instance. When <laughs> Obama, Obama, president, Barack Hussein Obama was president of the United States. I don't know whether he's watching this program because I sent him a message not quite long that I will be appearing on ITV. We are going to discuss Senegalese uh, politics and okay. other international. So, uh, if he's watching now, he, should, he knows what I'm saying is correct. Now, when he was president, he had 99 advisors. 
99 advisors on major issues that America need to talk about, whether domestic issues or international issues. For instance, African-American relations, Africa-Arab relations. There were experts who were advising the president on the basis of, of their party uh, uh, manifesto and his own uh, political ideology before he will make a statement. You see the president standing, making a statement. It's a statement that is well informed. A statement that several persons who are experts, several persons okay. who, 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 belong to, who belong to the same school of thought with him ideologically, okay. they have already told him, Mr. President, this, 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 this are the things we are going to do. This is the power and the limit to which you can carry this thing out. So when the president is talking, everybody will be applauding. Mr. President is talking, but several other persons made their own input. Okay. He told that. So we'll I come believe that this man can do that. We'll come back there. Uh, still on that aspect of, because you started the fire, uh, because we saw the smoke. <laughs> no, but no. Uh, uh, he, he, he has provided the, the solution. Go on. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. The on. Osman uh, song call and uh, friendship with fire. Because yeah. one thing is sure. It's not Osman Sonko as a president. Mm. It's Fai that will eventually uh, become president, sworn in as president tomorrow. And so what makes you think? Because it's one thing for he who wears the shoes to know where it pinches most. Yeah. And especially where, when it comes to taking some hard decisions that it doesn't need to be sentimental or doesn't need a, 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 a secondary uh, opinion when he knows that primarily that what he is planning to do will augur well. There could be a position, a, a face, where probably Osman Sonko, as perspective, could collide with that of uh, uh, Fai. How will it pan out? I'm not, I'm not seeing any here. Although human beings are no machines, mm -hmm. that you say you switch on, it will run clockwise, because they could run anti-clockwise. That is positioning that. But from what they have said, from what Osman Sonko has said, that Fay is him and he is him. Mm. That, could be a, a, that could be a political juggle. Uh, no, that two of them, be two of them went to, two of them in the went, end. No, two of, them went to, back. two of them went to prison together. That doesn't mean they it. have been fighting. That's not. The, that's not they have been fighting in the same camp, and they have the same ideology. That's not yardstick. But as they be born from even, it, even as twins yes. from the same womb. Yes. But they become enemies. Yes. But these are adults who can possibly manage themselves because they know the high stake on their shoulders. You understand? Because of that, each of them will maintain as uh, okay, what about, about what the local power. What about the cost of living? Because the, the cost of living that he's promising to reduce, yeah. I don't know the indices he's going to be using. Listen. Because we are also faced with that challenge globally. Yeah. No, How is he going to do it? Globally. Let me tell you, cost of living is predicated on lifestyle. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. If today there's a pronouncement in this country that say, eat what you produce drink what you produce and wear what you produce he has the ability to force if that the this, hand this, of the this, government in that direction you, this will he not because miss, will he not miss because, bricks with the people he, that he, he is the one that brought him into power he is the one in charge are you not sure he's going to be some bricks with the people that brought him into power because in the power. process of making such a change it's going to be painful yes. for the people that he serves no it's going to be painful for the government wait now let me tell you what people that in the year in Nigeria, if you are told to eat what you produce here, you think we will be hungry? It's a matter, of, be hungry. It's a matter of, 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 of closing the borders. Yeah, no, no more imported rice, for instance. We know what to fix in uh, Nigeria. No, you know, you know, because rice takes time, you know, to mature. That is why you feel anything about rice. People have within their compound vegetables and all of that. And then there's a, a farming system now where you can plant in, an, in, in a cemented environment. It, uh, it, you, you put soil in bags and plant whatever you want to do. It's done everywhere. Okay, but, but in the process, in, but in the process, process of all, eat what you produce, because yes. I have to quickly cut in. In the yes. process of eat what you produce, yes. that's like a long-term plan. What about the short-term plan? How do you tackle just now the cost of living that is skyrocketing? Because as we speak now, the cost of living in Senegal is quite high. It is because of no direction. When you give direction, if they were not, because I know uh, housing is very, very costly in Senegal. Exactly. If now you tell the people to build, and you look around in the world, 
and find the cheapest means of erecting buildings. Because people are, in this country in the past, people have, you know, uh, have done, uh, what they call it now, with wood and all of that, in this country, in the past. And people lived well and all that. If you go to a, a, the former AT&P, their buildings are not block buildings mm -mm. and all that. Their floors are not cement floors. They are wooden floors and all that. And we still have all of this. We have the environment. I'm telling you, it's intellect. Okay. Our leaders need to have intellect. In thinking about between Usman, Usman Sonko and... Uh, Jumai. Let, let, let me tell you. Okay. Remember, cast your mind back to 84, 85. Somebody was president of this country, but he was not the one calling the shots. Remember? <laughs> if you want me to call him, I mentioned Buhari versus Idiagon. <laughs> Do you understand? You hear matters of the moment. 4 p.m. Like that. He, the man, the photo president was Idiagon and all that. And things went well. Remember before they came, it was essential, essential period, essential commodity period. And they came. The Nigerians didn't die. Once you have the people with you, you will put through. If you yourself behave the same way. And I said, why I'm confidently talking is because these guys we are talking about, who have come, who are now leaders in Senegal, are, belong to the left. The left are not very expensive people. Do you understand? If you, is it cap, it's capitalism that is killing the world. Mm, exactly. That is what is happening. If tomorrow it is when he comes and says looking for SUV of Nigeria of 160 million, that is when you find that the people will now say, ah, is this the person we voted for? <laughs> Do you understand? Oh, yeah. if, he, if he comes up and then say, if, if, if your car is, is above the level of the former 504, then you will sell it. Okay, let's see, our events, let's see our events unfold. Yeah. Let's see our events unfold. Now, uh, uh, as we wrap up, uh, let's, let's get your view, perspectives, because you seem to have so much strong uh, hold or tenaciously hold on to the uh, principles and uh, the ideologies of uh, Dumai uh, Fai. I'm talking about you, Emmanuel. Now, what makes you think uh, is different from the kind of characters we can find in Nigeria? Yes, because um, I did say that uh, one thing I, I cherish so much about the young man is that he's a uh, philosophic, uh, philosophical politician. When you listen to him, I liken him to some uh, leaders of yesteryear. Are you saying we don't have philosophical we, politicians we in don't. Nigeria? We only have leaders who are so wasteful in what Nigeria. What does it take to have Listen. philosophical uh, politicians? You search them out. From you yes, and from their mind. do some philosophy with politics. Their mind. No. The <laughs> type we have here in Nigeria are leaders who will tell us, they'll come up with what they call executive orders. They begin to dish out executive orders like tissue papers. And I yes, because the likes of day. Alex Oti of Abia State, for instance. <laughs> that has been on the headlines of his leadership Why style would you? that is panning out well. Yes. Have you given us some flowers? Have you listened to him? Listen to him talk. You will know. City bank. It's what you have but in your you head. that as a philosophical uh, politician. And that's why we are here now. It is. But today in Nigeria, the challenge we have. We have leaders who have one thing in their mind and another thing in their mouth. There must be this nexus between your mind and your mouth. So that by the time you say something, the mind is re 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 ready to capture it and to put it to use. So that is the when you waste a lot and you are telling the people, tighten your bed and you, you are wasteful. What is the connection? <laughs> so you begin to see that the same people, just like Paul said, these people say, ah, ah not be this man, tell us like this. The, before you know, the same people will no longer be with you. Because they will feel that, ah, oh, this man is deceiving us. But when I don't listen to Faye, I see him, one, as somebody who will make a change. See, it is not rocket science to make a change in governance. And I think that is achievable. Okay. And I, I, I did say that I hope that our leaders here will learn from him. We saw one man, William Rutus of Kenya, who also had that good will, that uh, good species. But today... Is, is is giving us something okay. different, okay. Okay. but I think this young man, Faye, 
is somebody who become a subject matter in Africa. Okay, just let, as let, we are witnessing now in Burkina Faso under the military reign. Okay, before we take our rounds uh, as, as we wrap up, let's get your point, uh, David Lobakedo, as a science, political scientist. We're looking at the National Assembly, for instance. Uh, how do you expect the uh, president elect, as he's been sworn in, to tackle that aspect? The the president elect should know that of a Senegal, Basiro Diomaye Faye, should know that he is president of Senegal, not president of a political party, okay, not president of any of the regions, and. In the spirit of national reconciliation that he has proposed, he should not just call political leaders and say they are reconciling. There was a national dialogue that President Makisar called before, and it was Abdul Diouf and Wadi, President Abdullah Wad, that made him to call that national dialogue. It's an opportunity for, for him to call a national dialogue now, call national assembly members, call. All right. To sell ideas of how to rule this country. Just as he's uh, proposing a yeah. national reconciliation in yeah. that regard. Yes. Okay, okay. So that. Well, 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 well we, can see, we can see on the screen, uh, we can see him being uh, flanked by his wives, <laughs> uh, yeah. where this mark is all. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we can see this young man, 44 years, uh, being flanked by his wives. And the wives are pretty, uh, without doubt. <laughs> so uh, that's where corruption comes in. <laughs> so no, no, let's, no, let's, no, 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 let's look at the possibility. Let's look at the possibility of him being able to sustain this level of marrying just two women. We don't, we don't expect to see maybe many as, people as, as the year progresses. Many we, people we, have another, we have another we woman have of in the right. list of being his wives. Yes. I know uh, his religion doesn't uh, go but against any number religion. of wives, yes. but, but I, think, I think there should be an advice to watch uh, so that it, it, it doesn't bite more than he can chew, uh, starting with the uh, two wives he has. As we round off. Yeah, <laughs> I know that uh, women can bring some tons of weight mm. on his governing and try to be cloud him also. Exactly. With, you know, sense of reasoning. But then some also, uh, as it is with uh, my faith, they are help me and all that. So he could use them appropriately. Mm. And then once that is done, those ones themselves will help as members of the kitchen cabinet mm. to be able to bring about a new dawn in Senegal. And have, you not, have you not also I heard? Okay, yes. okay, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Uh, what I, mean, I, say, I, I see that happening. Okay, okay. Have, you not, have, have, have you not also heard that uh, it, it's dangerous to even stay at marrying just two wives because the two wives can connive and finish the man? <laughs> uh, what about having a third wife <laughs> no. uh, where even if two wants to do that, the third can report is, quickly. Is, so is, is, be a balance. Is, 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 this could is, be what could be happening to the wives. It's an opportunity to take four because it's a Muslim, <laughs> you understand. So, but that is. Uh, not the very major problem. No, no, it isn't. If, 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 as a leader, the wife may not even find him and all that. Okay. I'm saying that the man belongs to the left. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, your final points on this. Well, I yes. do not see the connection between his uh, number of wives and their governance if he has his head on his neck. If they disturb him, it could affect him. Uh, if they, if they disturb him, the, connection. the man can also choose to go and stay somewhere. Because for, for, one, one, for, uh, for me, I am not an advocate, advocate of uh, uh, polygamy, nor yeah, would I want the one or other so, uh, support polygamy. But since he chose to go to that, I think I, I, I want a situation where the man will think straight okay. and think about governance. But you advise that he watches the number. Not to right. increase it. It's entirely his business. Oh. He can go on and save Senegal from the situation Senegal is okay, just from now. the imbalance <laughs> of uh, the number of women to the men. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Thank you. Just uh, as a way of uh, digression uh, on uh, comic relief, let's get your final points on this in 30 seconds. Never. Oh, but women. But <laughs> no, 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 no. Whatever you want to comment on, you, you just have 30 yeah. seconds to round off. Well. I, I want a, a PD, a BD Faye, incoming president of Senegal, to study world politics and see, for instance, how the economy of Senegal can grow so that the negative impact of the Russian Ukraine uh, uh, conflict yeah. will be limited on this country. Okay. 
I also want him to speedily ensure that he sets machinery in motion to combat poverty in that country. All right, big thanks, Neville Bakedo. Big thanks, uh, Emmanuel Bakolo and Professor Julius Yassele. So much on this, and uh, a lot has been said. Well, we'll continue to uh, follow the process, and uh, we just hope that tomorrow will be a successful inauguration for Jumai Baru Basiro Fai. A whole lot Basiro. is expected in that direction, and we just hope that he'll hit the ground running. We want to see his cabinet, we want to see what he's going to do on the tripod agenda on reducing cost of living and also uh, fighting corruption. That's quite a, a big worry, a big fear. And also the aspect of national reconciliation. Maybe if he's able to do that and he goes through, a lot of African countries will also learn and see how this young man of 44 years is doing it. we we'll take another short uh, time to look at this maybe in the subsequent edition of Africa Discourse. For now, it's goodbye.